Hey guys, quick fix here. All right, so we're gonna be doing the racket pan on this 2008 or 11 Chevrolet Apollo with a 3.5. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter the year. The procedure is probably exactly the same. Um, so I talked to the customer and I told him to honestly believe that the issue is the inner tie rod. As you can tell, it's severed. And you can see the nut here. That's all loose, but he just wanted to do the racket pan instead. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. First thing we're gonna do is jack up this vehicle. Get it on jack and jack stands. So we're gonna move both wheels, both five, 19 mils. Whatever you see me do to one side, you're gonna have to do to both sides. So let's move both those wheels. This entire shot, dear God. So we're in a meanly Springs are probably worn out. All right, so we're underneath the vehicle. This is the inner tie rod. I'm not sure what was going on before I got to the vehicle, but as you can tell, only thing this man needs is the inner tie rod, but he wants to do the entire racket pan. That's fine. The next thing you wanna do is loosen up this castle nut, which is also missing a cutter pin. Castle nut. You put it on the stud like so. We're gonna try to remove this tie rod. And it's usually a 21 or 19. You're supposed to loosen this up with a wrench. Um, so I'll show you how to do the other side because the other side is in better condition. So let's loosen this up. All right, got that out of this place. And now I'm gonna show you guys the other side. Take your 18. This one doesn't have the cotter pin. It's just a lock locking nut and we're going to loosen up this jam nut here so i'll show you guys how to do that one take your wrench it's 22 and let's break her free that's not going to work let's try it from right here let's break her free like so loosen that up Got the nut on the end of the outer tie rod. Try to get a flush, like so. Like that, so when we hammer it, it comes right out, and you don't have to worry about mushrooming, mushrooming the outer tie rod. In the next spin, you wanna count the rotations. So one, two, three, four. Then you just tie this up and put this to the side. Um, but I'm actually trying to see if I get him to replace this. As you can see, this is shot. So I'll show you what's next. All right, so this, it's a backstory. Before I got here, I saw this on the floor. First sign that showed me that someone was here, right? So, you know me, jack up the car, look under it. Someone was clearly trying to do his job, so I can't even show you how to properly do it. But you're gonna have a bolt here, but it's a bolt and a nut that you have to remove. I believe it's 18, maybe a 15. Um, and you're gonna have to remove that nut there and go to the opposite side. And as you can tell, someone was trying to remove it. So I'm gonna just take it off now. Our jack up on this lower subframe back part of it Let's jack it up a little bit and now we're going to move those two bolts take your 21 mil loosen up this lower subframe bolt one and on the other side take your 21 here's your bolt and just take the washer. And now we get to lower the subframe a bit. Just checking the jack stands. I will keep my jack on it the entire time. And you don't want to damage the front engine mounts by lowering it too much. And now we're gonna take off the intake manifold cover. Put 
the cat back on so nothing falls in there. And then from there, you can see your pressure and return line. As you can tell, someone's been here and it's stripped. So I'll show you guys how to loosen those up. See how I stripped the yard. All right, before I remove that uh, main line and return line, I'm gonna give myself some space. So let's remove this air box and these two nuts. So some room to work with here. That feels pretty loose. You got a PCV valve. Just pull the tab back. Here, got the mass airflow. Um, let me see here, just pop her up. This sensor just pops up. Push down, pull that mass airflow out. Now let's get this air box out of this housing. Come on, girl. Here we go. Keep this, you don't want to lose this. All right, once you get it that way, let's get the sensor out. So you don't gotta worry about breaking it. Get that out your way. And then now, take your wrench, or crow foot wrench, with your extensions. And I'll show you when I'm on it, what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. See, got the crow foot, one extension, and a swivel. Here you go, it fell off, but I just wanted you guys to see. All right, I know you guys can't see, but I got my crow foot wrench on. Let's break it free. There we go. That's so much easier than using a wrench. Look, see? Got that one free, turn it by hand. Let's get this out. By the way, actually I'm gonna need a uh, drain pan. So I'm gonna put that in a little bit more. And then now we're gonna go to this bottom line here. All right, if you look, you can see, got my crew foot wrench on the other 18. We want to break that free as well. Hopefully you can see. Alright. Let's see here. Alright, let's break her free. Yep. Got her loose. And that right there, using that method, can save you so much time. Instead of using a wrench. All right, we got the main and return line off. Girl, you really stuck in there, huh? Okay, got her out. We're also missing the, oh wait, no, we had the nut. It's the other one that we're missing. And I got a spare one for it. I do. I believe it's a 12, but you want to get the steering wheel straight. Uh, let's see here. Turn it to the side, and you're going to move that 12 millimeter pinch bolt. I'm just making sure it actually is. Yeah, it is a 12. Right there. We're going to remove that pinch bolt next. All right. Got a swivel, extension, and a 12. Let's get it on that pinch bolt and break it free. There we go. All right, let's take out that pinch bolt. See here, if I can get it with my hand now. Just move that cover up. 
You can do it by hand, just lift it up. It's not that hard to get to. And there's our pinch bolt. Go to the side. Now you lift up the cowling sleeve and you just lift up. Sometimes you might need a pry bar. Give it a little impact. There we go. And now steering column is separate from this rack and pinion. And now I'm gonna go back up to the top and remove this pressure line. Sound damage any of the uh, power steering lines there. Make sure you steer wheel straight. And then with the subframe lowered, uh, you can remove this power steering gear, turn to the side. Be careful though. Keep your bucket underneath. Just let that drain for a second. But be careful while you're doing this. Because you don't want to damage any of the return lines or power steering lines. For moving the uh, bracket pinion. Okay. Remove it with the bucket. And there you go and we have new fittings so you see here it's slightly worn out with how skinny it is but we're gonna have new fittings and we got this out now it's time to install the new one here's our new racket pinion i pushed the bushings and boy well, basically the bushings i don't know what that center part is called uh but yeah you this bushing was shot anyway um but yeah i got the new bushings We'll put the new jam nuts. And you also want to size up this rack of pinion. So like here, make sure all the, the ports are in the same spot. Make sure everything looks good. Let's remove these plastic covers. Don't forget your O-rings. Take our rack of pinion and install it the same way it was removed. Let's get this tie rod straight. And your tie rod straight. And let's get it through. Turn it sideways. That was the same way we had to remove it to get it in. Place it in this housing that's on the subframe. Lower subframe. Well, subframe. I'm saying any. And once we get her in, I might have to turn to the side. Try to line her up. It helps with two people, but you don't need two people. She takes a little bit more time. That power steering line out my way. Take your bolt. And next, you get your, once you get your bolt aligned, I just hammer it to get past the subframe so you don't have to remove the subframe. Not subframe, sway bar. There we go. Got that through. Get a couple hand threads. Try to keep that from moving. Getting a few hand threads. See, 
Got a couple hand threads on there. All right, next, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay. Take your nut washer, bolt and washer. Give it a little persuasion, the hammer. And then start the nut by hand so you know it's not gonna move. <clears throat> I'm about to get under the car. <sighs> Got my hand behind. No, no. Hold on, hold on. Ah. There we go. Let's try to get you on the bolt there. Come on, bro, help me out. Try to keep her still. There we go. Get a couple threads. And now we're gonna go into the steering column and then the power steering lines. So now we're at the steering column. You're gonna take shaft here, place it on top of the racket pinion. Can't see too much of my hand in the way, but there's no other way I could do it. And then you take your 12. Come on, girl. Gravity won't fight me here. And you start your threads by hand. Okay. That was pretty good. Now we can tighten her up. I think this gets torqued to, I think it was 36 or 25 foot pounds. Either way, just make sure it's tight. All right, once that's tightened, just put your cover back on. Let's push this down. Come on, girl, close. There we go. Got the cover on, let's go to the top of the vehicle. All right, so now we're at the top of the vehicle. Um, I already put the new O-ring on. I did it off camera, but you wanna th start your threads by hand. And then torque it to 25 foot pounds. Just turn it until you can't turn it anymore by hand. And then when you're gonna torque it, there's one. I'm get my wrench. And now we're going to tighten her back up using a wrench. There we go. Make sure she's tight. A little 
whole strip from last person tried to do this job, but I think I'll be able to save it. Let's make sure this other one's in there. Tighten her up too. You guys can't really see but hope you get the idea Come on, girl uh. yeah make sure she's tight Feels good. It's about 25 foot pounds. They both feel good. All right. Let's get a wrench on this side. And a ratcheting wrench on the other side. And now, let's tighten her up. It goes to 66 foot pounds. Hold on. There we go. That's good. Almost done. Tighten this up. Okay. Try to get her from a different angle or switch sides. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can. There we go. Let's just do this. There we go. I don't think you guys can see, but I got no choice. Check up the subframe and get those two 21s in. Get a couple hand threads. There you go. It's in there. And then we're on the other side. Same thing. Get a couple bolts. Threads, not bolts. Okay. 
a little more rust on it. The other side. In and torque those two bolts. And now, let's try to get this alignment right. All right, now we're gonna put this tire right back on. I told them about them. As long as they work, so barely, you want to keep them anyway. Nothing else I can do. So put these two uh, outer tie rods on. If you're gonna do the alignment, try to at least get the wheel straight. Do not tighten up that jam nut. So I'll show you guys once we got both um, tie rods on and bolted up. And I'll show you pretty much how to do the alignment. All right, so let's try to get that tightened up and with a new cotter pin that was never on there. Same thing to the other side. threads get my gun tie these two down ah she's spinning shucks okay let's see all right push down Hard as you can. When you do that, gets it in the socket. And then you can make sure that's tight. All right, next thing we're gonna do is put this wheel on um, and get these, get these wheels straight. Got this wheel. This tire is shot. Ridiculous. All right, get these lug nuts on. Start by hand. If only I had a shop. This man would have had a crazy bill. All the stuff he needs. The other side on. Uh, don't forget your cotter pin, like how I just did. No, it's not gonna work. Hold on. Strong, bro. Here we go. Get that snug. That feels good. Okay. Uh, let's put this wheel on. Okay, let's come under the vehicle and turn that into a tie rod. Towards the center. I will 
will still recommend an alignment shot, but I'm gonna do it just so he could drive the vehicle for the most part and make it easier at the alignment shop as well. Check this out. Do a little more. Damn, bro. You just hold John by yourself. Sorry, someone was talking to me. I don't know if you probably, you probably saw his legs before I cut off the video. We just keep going. Sure. It's Will Street. Same thing to the other side. Uh. Uh. Go back a little bit. Uh. A little bit. I think that is good. Let's jam that back on. I'm gonna tighten her up. Make sure that's tight. We're gonna make it easier on them at the lemon shop, but you don't wanna have it loose. All right. My GoPro's about to die. But put the air assembly back for your power steering fluid. Uh, before you turn the before you turn the vehicle on, turn the wheel to the left and right. And um, if it doesn't die, always remember guys, a better, faster service, quick fix here. So I'm gonna just record until it just dies out on me. Okay, this one got caught. All right. Oh, I'm gonna take that off. Put this back. And also, the snorkel goes on. That should be tighter. Hurry up and tie these back up. It's loosening it. Oh, come on, come on. All right, hey, make sure it's tight. You don't need to over tighten it. that tight it's PCV clicks back into place had the mass airflow behind these harnesses here we'll get this clip goes in place like so but everything else is fine yes yeah, in this place right, let's add power steering all right, we got a funnel on. And power steering. I put too much. Shoot. All right. Put too much in there. Because when you're bleeding out, when you're bleeding, this power steering is going to come up. And I'm gonna lose fluid. I put too much in there. So try to feel like halfway first. It's my fault. All right, now let's turn this wheel. Get in the vehicle, the key. Here we go. Turn the wheel all the way to the right and hold for like three seconds. Then go the other way and then hold three seconds and do that back and forth um, I guess about like 10 times um, whatever until you know that it's right 
So I'll show you guys once that's done. All right, you know the job was done right. You get in the vehicle, you turn the wheel, it turns freely, no binding, nothing. Freely. All right, I'll see you guys on a test drive.